Proctor's Children's Home is, or more accurately was, the oldest purpose-built children's home in Scotland. The home, which was built in 1891, was funded by a £3,500 legacy donated by Mr James Proctor, who himself inherited somewhere in the region of £35,000, which was a vast sum of money way back then. The house and steading were built for the pricely sum of £1,200, and the balance of the money was used to fund its operation. Proctor's is often described as an orphanage, but in fact, it's mainly catered for children from poor or broken homes. For example, its most famous boarder, the author Jessie Kesson, was placed in care as her mother was a prostitute up in Elgin. Proctor's was in operation for almost a hundred years, but children's care homes of this nature eventually went out of fashion, and the house and steading were closed down and boarded up around 1990. The property was systematically vandalised over a 22-year period and thieves ripped out all the copper pipework which resulted in the building being flooded. The C-listed building deteriorated further over the years and eventually made it onto the listed buildings at risk register. The reason it stood unoccupied and unused for so long was that it could not be sold due to the legal terms and conditions specified when it was gifted by James Proctor. Eventually, in 2011, the Lord Advocate of Scotland removed these conditions, which allowed the Board of Trustees to sell off the property for residential purposes, with the proceeds going towards the benefit of local children. This coincided with the sale of Tom Burns Company, which gave him the resources to embark on the monumental task of restoring Proctors to its former glory and beyond. When Tom and Caroline first went to view the property, which they admired for the previous 30 years or so, Tom said to his wife that if there were any bad vibes, that is feelings of unhappiness due to being an orphanage in a children's home, they wouldn't be buying it. But from day one, even when the windows were shuttered up and it was really dark inside, the place still felt comfortable to them. Indeed, many previous inmates, or should I say boarders, have been in touch with Tom and Caroline and even visited the restored house, and all of them seem to have happy memories for the place. Some of the children, it was the first time they'd experienced a proper home life with caring parents. Anyway, they bought Proctors and the Steading for £100,000 over the asking price, just to make sure they got it, as they suspected the property developers were also after Proctors due to the eight acres of land that went with it. They strongly suspect that if they hadn't bought it, Proctors would have been restored to a far lower standard and would now be surrounded by a modern development of 50 to 60 houses to pay for the restoration. Proctors was completely surrounded by trees, which after years of neglect and uncontrolled growth, totally overshadowed the house, sealing any sunlight and making it a gloomy place. The roots had grown into the drains, causing blockages and collapse. The trees were also in a poor state, as most of them were diseased. The trees were not protected, so the minute the property became theirs, Tom remembers it was a Thursday, he instructed the tree surgeons to take them down by Sunday evening, that is, before the Aberdeenshire Council offices opened on Monday morning. He knew full well that if he asked for permission to fell them, it would have been denied, and preservation orders would have been raised because that's what they do. The next thing is Tom was being threatened with prosecution for the unlicensed felling of trees with embarrassing notices of impending prosecution, advising the general public of the same, posted around his property. When Tom told the Forestry Commission that he didn't need a license according to the guidance on their website, they sheepishly removed the notices and when pushed further regarding the inept way that they went about things, they sent him a compensation check. The renovation of Proctors all began with the dreaded planning permissions and listing building consents, where Tom and Caroline had to jump through hoops to try and satisfy the planners and councillors who seemed to default to the decision of permission denied. At the end of a year-long struggle, they were finally granted planning permission with the appropriate listing building consent, and guess what? There were no amendments to the original plans, just a year of their valuable time wasted. As Tom says, times become more valuable the older you get. 
One of the silliest objections was aimed at the round windows on the north facing side of the swimming pool, where the only viewers of the same would be cows and sheep, and the occasional housebreaker, and we can't be offending them can we, poor dears. Turns out this was not a planning issue, but the window design merely went against the personal taste of one of the councillors. Other objections were, one by one, kicked into touch, as having no legitimate base for objection or permission, and was finally granted when one of the councillors asked the planning department if they could suggest any way the design could be improved. When they were devoid of any other further suggestions and couldn't prove the original design, the councillors voted it through. It was quite a sizable project, and not only were Tom and Caroline restoring a derelict vandalised building, but they were also adding two side extensions and a large extension at the rear to house a swimming pool, hot tub, steam room, sauna, shower room, water closet, the gymnasium and a four-car garage. The house itself was stripped right back to the granite walls. All windows removed, the floor removed and the eternal foundation dug up. This was followed by the removal of all lathing plaster and a few alterations to internal walls to make it a more practical home. At this point they started to think, oh my god, what have we taken on? And they took down the rear gable end to facilitate access to the pool and gym. They said it was a bit depressing at the start of the project as it was all takedowns and demolition work, but once they had the building jet washed, re-slated and the roof repaired and the chimney pots, it started to look like the old Proctors was rising from the ashes. They more or less built a brand new home inside the old granite shell, using the most efficient insulation and latest technology for heating, wiring and plumbing. The floor was remade with poured concrete, complete with underfloor heating, with the water heated by an efficient biomass boiler. Once the new double glazed sashing case windows went in, it was like giving the house eyes again and Proctor's was coming back to life. At this time the swimming pool was being excavated. Caroline thought it looked a bit small, so promptly got down into the hole and walked the length of it while making swing motions with her arms. A few workers had come around the corner and stood watching, but Tom said nothing to Caroline. When she got to the far end and turned around, she was greeted with cheers and a round of applause. Of course, it was all Tom's fault for not warning her. As Proctor's was purpose-built as an institution, the eternal decoration, including coving, was plain and simple, and there wasn't a ceiling rose in sight. They believed the house deserved better, so they installed large dual pattern cornice, which has both the egg and dart and dental patterns. This particular cornice presented quite a few problems, as the two patterns went out of sequence along its 3 meter lengths, which made cutting and joining awkward and created a lot of waste. However, the end result was worth it. When viewed along the corbels, ceiling roses and chandeliers, it's almost like being an inside-out wedding cake. Similarly with the original wood panelling, it was very plain and had been re-varnished so many times that it was very dark in colour and you couldn't see any of the wood grain. This was all removed and given to a restoration company who brought it back to life and sold it on. They then had the joiners fit new wood paddling, stained to a warm honey colour to match the 17 reclaimed Tudor doors that they had fitted throughout the house. These doors were obtained from a restoration yard in Birmingham, where they came out of a renovated convent. The holiness part of the restoration was offset by the new slates of the roof, which came from a demolished distillery in Murrayshire. Tom and Caroline basically wanted to keep the main core of the house in the Victorian style, but when you step into any of the main rooms, they are modern, bright and up to date. The restored and modified house now consists of Entrance vestibule, wood panelled to a dado height Front and rear hallway, wood panelled A 
formal lounge, drawing room, with large feature oak fireplace with feature glass doors leading to a formal dining room, a snooker room with full-size table and French doors opening onto the west terrace patio, a large kitchen and breakfast room on open plan, a large TV lounge with French windows opening to the south-facing front of the house, a cloakroom with WC, a bedroom with ensuite shower room, a utility room with door opening to the east terrace patio. The rear of the hallway gives access to the swimming pool hall, spa and gym. A 12 metre by 6 metre swimming pool with electric shower pool cover, a hot tub, a steam room, sauna, essence shower, showers and water closet. The stairs lead up to the large gym which is glass fronted and overlooks the pool. A glass walkway leads from the gym back to the mezzanine level of the house. The main staircase leads up to the first landing where an archway leads to the rear mezzanine level where there are two further double bedrooms, each with ensuite shower rooms. Further stairs take you to the first floor where the master bedroom suite is situated. This consists of the main bedroom with dressing room and his and hers ensuite shower rooms. Also on this floor are his and hers studies which can double up as bedrooms if the house gets busy. The main large family bathroom is also on this floor with a freestanding bath and separate shower closet. A secret door leads up to the second floor which is basically a bed sit. The steading was converted into a four bedroom, four bathroom holiday cottage which caters for eight to create an income stream which should pay for the running of the main house. It has a separate driveway so it does not affect the security or privacy of the main house. The grounds were landscaped and the complete project topped off with matching electric wrought iron gates at the end of the 130 yard driveways to provide added security and privacy. After all the trials and tribulations of dealing with councillors, planners and conservationists, Tom just wanted to mention the young lady, not of this country, that turned up to advise him of the conservation issues. Whilst looking at the steading, she thought it was a new build. When Tom explained it was a converted steading, she still looked a bit bemused. Tom explained it was a barn where they kept animals. She said, oh yes, the people next door in the castle. Proctor's main house. Then she went on to knock on the guttering downpipes and said, you can get these in plastic, you know. Tom said he had to walk away at this stage before he did something he may have regretted later. Aye, the council are certainly ticking all the boxes when it comes to diversity, employment, but at what cost? Sacrificing competence. Finally, when it came to the two matching electric gates, a councillor or somebody from the planning department turned up. Didn't bother to contact Tom, but made the recommendation that he just fit wooden gates like the rest of the farms in the area. Proctor's was never a farm, but a grand house, even grander now as such, and it deserved a grand entrance. Six months later, they got permission to build the gates once again with no amendments to the original design, just more time wasted. All in all, the project took four years to complete, and Tom's hair has turned grey to white, but it was worth it. He says it's like living in a five-star hotel with all facilities to yourself, and there's no better sound than the grandkids screaming and laughing as they play in the pool. That's when they're not chasing the cows around the fields on their quad bikes. Hopefully Proctor's will last another hundred years or so before it needs its next restoration, and many happy families will pass through it as caretakers in the future.